with the blues By his hands I am fed In his grace I am led Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. I want to welcome everybody here, everybody watching on YouTube. If you watch on YouTube, make sure to like, subscribe, hit notifications, but most importantly, share the video because it's another way we can grow this ministry. Amen. Let us pray, church. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful day, and thank you for talking to us in ways that we don't even realize sometimes. Help us to keep our eyes open and uh, just look around and, and see what you've created. And sometimes you talk to us uh, by nature, and uh, we thank you for the many, many blessings and all the things that you do for us, Lord. Be with us this morning. Be with Pastor Johnny as he brings a message, and uh, let your will be done, Lord. Amen. the dark you come my fearful heart and I will rest in you you give me perfect peace fulfill my deepest need and I will rest in you
let your kingdom come. I want to be with you in your presence and I here to give you praise. You take my breath away and now I'm here with you in your presence. And stories of what they think you're like But I've heard the tender whisper of love In the dead of night And you tell me that you're pleased And that I'm never alone you're a good, good father It's who you are It's who you are It's who you are And I'm loved by you It's who I am It's who I am It's who I am I've seen many searching for it far and wide but I know we're all searching for answers only you can provide cause you know just what we need before we say a word you're a good good father to you are to you are it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways You are perfect in all of your ways You are perfect in all of your ways To us Oh, it's love so undeniable can hardly speak peace so unexplainable I, I can hardly think as you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still into love Love, you're a good, good father It's who you are It's who you are It's who you are And I'm loved by you It's who I am It's who I am It's who I am You're a good, good father It's who you are It's who you are it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am.
Good morning, welcome, and it is Father's Day, so we have a Heavenly Father who, thank you for sharing that, that was just awesome, and you know, if we're in the Lord, we are all eagles, because we fly high in freedom, don't we? That's an awesome thing, but it is, our kids love that too, when we're driving around and we actually see one, it's like, oh, so I can definitely, we can definitely identify with that. Thank you, praise team, for your constant... De dedication and effort and your faithfulness to bring us into worship each and every Sunday. It's a lot of work, it's a lot of scheduling, but I know God gives you those gifts and we're very thankful that you share them. So thanks. Thank you again to Samantha for doing an awesome job of providing gifts for Father's Day, just like you did on Mother's Day. Uh, if you didn't pick one up on the way in, please feel free to pick one up on the way out. So uh, with that, let's go ahead and pray and we will get started. Uh, and hopefully get out of here in time, early maybe. Maybe I, I poke fun at the Baptist because, again, I was raised Baptist. But you know, on a serious note, we here at Solid Rock are not condemning or critical of any denomination by name. If you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and God the Father, you are our brothers and sisters in Christ, and we support them. And we don't quibble about theology or doctrine as long as those three things are in place and you believe in heaven and hell and that this book is true. So let's pray and we'll get started. And I will ask the question after we pray so that you have some time to think through it and answer, answer with integrity, okay? So Father, thank you again for being a good, good father. Help us earthly fathers to hear instruction from your word. Help me to speak it with truth and con concisely. And moreover, help us to be obedient so that we can do your will, which is to be a good, good father while we have time on this earth that you give us. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. So, we know this book to be true, as I stated from front to rear. How many had an opportunity to read something, not necessarily Deuteronomy chapter 6, which you can turn to, which is our scripture reading day. Very good. If you're out there on YouTube, we welcome you as well. And we also commend you, as we do all of you in here, if you found some time in your busy schedule to read the Bible, it is something that we need to do because it gets us through each day. Uh, if you miss a day, don't beat yourself up. Just make a pact with God that you're going to do it the next day. Read twice as much. Maybe three times as much, whatever you've missed. So do that, please. Deuteronomy chapter 6, if you're new in the faith, either here or out there in YouTube world, it's toward the front of the Bible. It's the fifth book in the Old Testament. And it's Moses talking to his people, and there's some good stuff in it. So without further ado, we'll just go ahead and read it. It's chapter 6 of Deuteronomy, and we'll start in verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 1. Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you that ye might do them in the land whither you go to possess it, that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God, as be reverent to him, to keep all his statutes and commandments, which I command thee, thou and thy son, and thy son's son, all the days of thy life, 
and that the days may be prolonged. So he's giving you a commandment and saying, and, and a result of that, if you do this, your days will be prolonged. Pretty simple. Uh, it's logical. Verse 3, Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that ye may increase mightily, as the Lord God of thy fathers has promised thee in the land that floweth with milk and honey. In verse 4, he begins to tell us exactly some of the things that we need to do. So he starts out saying, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. He's it. No, remember, we've already went through Exodus where we got the Ten Commandments and he said, there shall have no other gods before me. He's it. So, here's what he says, verse 5. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. Verse 6. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. So, memorize them, remember them, keep them inside you. Don't just read them. Verse 7, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou wakest, or risest up. So basically, all the time, every day, find time to do that, okay? Pretty straightforward, do it, teach them, right? Verse 8, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thy eyes. In other words, thine eyes. In other words, kind of like, I uh, liken it to the quarterbacks in the NFL. They got this thing nowadays on their wrist. They got the playbook that gets them to the end result that they're wanting, the touchdown. If I do this, I'm going to get this, right? So it's kind of like the same thing as a word picture. He's saying, keep that thing right here on your radar, right in front of your face. You know, don't get distracted by other stuff. Keep this in mind, because I think all of us that have children know that we can get real distracted in this life, and the next thing you know, we're like, what are you doing? <laughs> it's because we've probably lost track of them for a bit, and they need guidance, loving guidance, right? And so, the last verse that I want to read here uh, in this section of the scripture is verse 9. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. Anybody ever seen the sign that's from uh, Joshua that says, I don't know about you, but our house, we're going to serve the Lord. That is a good thing to have on your door. Because as you go out your door, you read that. Hopefully as people come in your door that visit you, when they go out that door, they read that thing too. Because it's, once again, in your face. Right? Doesn't mean we we'll always pay heed to it, but at least it's there to constantly remind us that, hey, are we serving the Lord in this house, or are we serving ourselves? right? Nothing wrong with doing things you need to do. It's a busy life, but we need to do that against the backdrop of serving the Lord our God, right? So this particular passage of Scripture that we just read should be a help and a reminder to us when we need direction on what the Lord expects of us as fathers as we raise our children, mothers too. Even though it was written thousands of years ago, obviously in the Old Testament pre-Christ, it still applies today. I think it applies even more because here in the 21st century, there are a lot of things that we have in our face that can go wrong when we are trying to raise our children. And one of them is that little square thing that all children love to get on. And they will get on that thing and stay on that thing 24-7 unless you take it away. And the other one's about this big, depending on what you got. I guess the Samsung Galaxy is this big. I don't know. <laughs> But the iPhone and the iPad are very big distractors, and they, are, they have their place. But we need to be aware of that and uh, you know, throttle that back to what, what is applicable. So I think God is telling me a message to hurry up because people are hungry. <laughs> it's okay. Exactly. There you go. Thank you, Kenny. Very timely. Very, very, very timely. It's not a big deal. We, as Pastor Todd says, we love hearing from God in this place, whether it's a cell phone going on, our baby's crying, so it's all good. We, we don't get upset about that, right? But not only do we need to know how and what to do that is right, and we're going to read that verse here in a minute, it, later on in that chapter, and what not to do that is wrong, but by our, most importantly, by our own actions, we must model the godly behavior by our, our obedience to our Heavenly Father as fathers when we ask and expect our children to obey us. 
they need to see that, right? Because here's what we've probably all learned, whether your children are grown and out of the house or you still got them. Children are good at two things, and they're extremely good at them. Mimicking what you're saying, right? Sometimes I cringe, going, what are they going to say in church today when it's quiet? <laughs> right? <laughs> what have they heard from me lately? But anyway, and number two, what are we doing? What is our actions? Because they will mimic your actions just as well as they will mimic what you're saying. Probably even better, right? If you go back to Deuteronomy uh, chapter 6, I think it's down there in, uh, let's see, verse 18. Again, referring to what's right and what's good. And thou shalt, verse 18, Deuteronomy chapter 6. And thou shalt do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord, that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest go in and possess the good land which the Lord swore unto thy fathers. And so, do what's right and what's good. How do you know that? We read our Bible. Freebie, I've said it before, if you want to have some good information, some good advice on what is right and what is good, read the entire book of Proverbs from front to rear and read it often because there is so much information in there on what's right and good. You know, business practices, do what's right, do what's fair, do what's honest, you know. Um, there's a couple of other things that we'll discuss about Proverbs uh, here in a little bit. Um, you can't go through Father's Day without referring to Ephesians chapter 6. If you want to turn there, it's in the New Testament. Ephesians chapter 6, obviously the infamous verse, which I have to have my wife constantly throttle me and correct me. I love the first two verses. Every parent loves that. Children will be your parents of the Lord, for this is right. Honor like father and mother, blah, blah, blah. Right? We want that. Here's the hard part for me. Verse 4. And ye fathers provoke not, in other words, I think some, the other translation says exasperate, right? Do not exasperate your children to wrath or anger, but bring them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. We all know that when you're on your last nerve, it's very easy to do that with anger and exasperate your children, right? But the Word, the word of God says, hey, you need, to, you need to temper that. And so thankfully I have my wife to help remind me that I need to, you know, be a little bit more compassionate and loving in my correction. Because I want to go back to the old Marine Corps drill instructor mode of yelling and screaming and, you know, because that's what I kind of learned and I figured whatever command I just barked at that you're trying to actually act like you didn't hear, I better say it louder, right? <laughs> and more often until you finally get it. Sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. But the point is, that sometimes works. But really, I think what God wants us to do is get to a place where they're obeying you, not because they're fearful, not, but because just like us fathers, we have become reverent to our Heavenly Father and they become reverent to us because we're not doing, they're, they're not obeying us out of sheer terror and fear, but rather they know that we love them and that we're doing it for their own good. Now, I still got a long way to go. Uh, and as many days as the Lord gives me on this earth, as probably the rest of us, mothers and fathers, we will all hopefully continue to improve on whatever our shortcomings are in that vein. So don't beat yourself up if you failed. Just have hope and pray. Say, God, help me. It's the old, you know, it's old help me Jesus. It's, and he will. He will definitely do that. All right? So, but make no mistake, there needs to be discipline, right? There needs to be discipline. I, Proverbs, if you go to Proverbs, the book I told you to, the, that has so much information, go to Proverbs chapter 13, um, I believe it's verse 24. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 24. He that spareth his rod hateth his son, but he that loveth him chasteneth him betimes, meaning early. I think another version says, he spoiled the rod, spare the child, that verbiage. And I think we've all heard that, right? Um, it is true. Every once in a while, when all else has failed, and there, there needs to be a, a, a more, if you will, drastic step, there's nothing wrong in this day and age still, even though maybe legally there are some challenges going on out there, for a good old-fashioned spanking. And I'm not talking abuse, I'm talking, you know, with your hand appropriately where it hurts, but not 
abuse with a two by four or you know don't let's not let's not misinterpret the rod to be some steel piece of rebar that you <laughs> you know that's not the rod we're talking about so anyway every once in a while that that's definitely warranted again there must be discipline in a godly family but not by punishment by abusing them because there is a difference and this difference can be physically and psychologically damaging whenever whatever excessive form of abuse is used, especially if it's constantly used, because it can cause injury to a child's spirit. It, it really can. Sometimes this physical and psychological abuse can scar a child for a long time in their life as they grow up and they have children. You know? But we need to be able to break that generational cycle because it can happen that, that way. And we need to get professional help sometimes to get by that, either with our our uh, pastors or people that are Christian counselors that are professionally educated to understand the human psyche and how all this stuff works. It's okay. We, we need to be able to admit and say, I need some help because I'm, I'm going a little bit overboard here. Maybe it doesn't apply to you. And if it doesn't, that's great. Remember, godly discipline, again, is not to be used as a form of punishment, but as a way to instruct our children as we said before, uh, a reference in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 18, we want to them to be able to clearly see the difference between what is the right thing to do that's pleasing to the Lord and what is the wrong thing, right, that displeases the Lord in any given situation. We as fathers should be able to model how and be able to explain to our children why the Lord disciplines us and chastises us as earthly fathers. His purpose, as they might you know, find out if they read it with us or we read it to them is found in the book of Hebrews, chapter 12. If you want to turn there, that's kind of like yeah, three quarters of the way through the New Testament, Hebrews chapter 12. And we read in verse 6 uh, what the Lord's chastisement is all about. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 6. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourges every son whom he receiveth. For the word chastening, you can substitute the word discipline if you'd like. If you endure chastening, God dealeth with you as sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then ye are bastards and not sons. Now here's where we switch over to a comparison of earthly fathers in verse 9. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, that's our earthly fathers, and we gave them reference. Shall we not much be rather in subjection unto the, subjection unto the father of spirits and live? For they, for a few days, and they, they're now, ref he's referring back to our earthly fathers, for they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit, that we may be partakers in his holiness. There are two things going on there. Earthly fathers, they say, get it done, do this, do that, because they had some earthly motive, some uh, uh, thing that they needed from their children, right? Whereas God says, I, I'm chastising you and scourging you because I want you to become holy. I want you to be like me, like Jesus, because after all, that's part of being a Christian, to become more like Jesus as we progress through this walk here in, in, in our flesh. So that is, an, uh, in, in my mind, an example of how we really need to think about our discipline from the Lord when we get it, because we're doing something that is wrong or sinful outright, and then again, our children, you know, the same thing. Are we disciplining them and getting in their case because there's something we need from them apart from them, you know, sharing in the holiness of God? Because we all need them to, to behave and do their thing, right? We're going to have an example here in just a couple minutes of, of a perfect example of that statement in verse 10. For they verily for a few days chastened us, that is disciplined us, after their own pleasure. You'll see. Hey, if you're here this morning or listening out there on YouTube, maybe, maybe you don't have children. I know we have some people in here that don't have children. That's a good thing. You're just called to be single. Or, or perhaps you feel because of that, you know, this message doesn't really apply to you. But it can, okay? You can because I encourage you to pray and ask God to put a child or some children into your life 
that you can mentor as a Christian. Because then you can become a father figure to them. There are children in this world that need that. They really do. Uh, that, that are having a missing father for whatever reasons. And we'll just leave it at that. But they need you, right? Then you can be a father figure that can teach these godly principles that we've been talking to, to them. Because the answer to that prayer, God already knows. And he already knows that child or that group of children or people that he has that you can be helpful for in their situation, and he needs you to intervene. So pray that prayer and see what the Lord brings you. Here's another scenario. If, you, if your children perhaps are already grown up and gone, maybe you parted on good terms, maybe you parted on bad terms, hopefully good, or maybe they're still living at home at whatever age, and you're currently experiencing some difficult times. You know, maybe perhaps in either case they become bitter or disp displaying rebellious behavior, okay, for whatever reasons. Maybe you feel that it's your fault, either as a father or a mother or together, that this is going on, uh, because you think you didn't do a very good job. So this message then would be especially for you, because the message is that you need to be encouraged and have hope. Through the Bible and Jesus as your helper and savior, there's always hope, no matter where you're at, right? That's an awesome thing. Through your prayer and your obedience, Remember last week, Pastor Todd talked about the fruit of the Spirit, right? The fruit of the Spirit can and will be the basis upon which your relationships as fathers can return to being what God intended them to be, right? They can be filled with love, joy, peace, long-suffering, also known as patience, gentleness, right? Goodness, faithfulness, meekness, known as humility, and temperance, uh, self-control. We can do that. Hard at sometimes, but we can do it. But it must start with you, it must start with me, fathers, an adult daddy do-over, if you will, right? So to speak. Chances are we as fathers, because of our calling, will need to set the example and take the first step, right? I think God would be very pleased with that. You may ask to ask your Heavenly Father to help you to usher in Reconciliation by a display of God-inspired humility, one of the fruits of the spirits we just heard about. Because as I've often had to do in my own children's life, maybe some of you can identify with this, it comes a time when I need to apologize and ask them to forgive me. Because maybe I've overstepped my bounds with the way I interacted with them, right? Regarding disciplinary things. Or maybe I've even acted out in some ungodly behavior in front of them, or worst case scenario, right, directed at them, right? The point is, we as fathers are not above and should never be above apologizing to our children when it is appropriate, right? You gotta, the old, you gotta swallow your pride. It's not I'm the boss, all that. It's just, I apologize. I'm sorry I hurt you. Please forgive me, right? Because once again, what are we doing? We are saying what God wants us to say, as long as it's from our heart, and we are doing and modeling the behavior, both of which, somewhere down the road, we can have hope that they will mimic that. That's a good mimic. Very simple. I know that we all know that as God's children, as earthly fathers, when we mess up, when we sin, when we act unbecomingly, he is patient with us. And when we ask him to forgive us, he does. Once again, he doesn't preach at us. Hey, it's the 55th time you did that in 20 minutes. What's this mess over here? Uh, I'm tired of this crap. Uh. We all do that. I do it. Right? I just cleaned that up. Now you got a pile over here. Actually, there's seven. Right? It's natural. It's normal. Call it your wits in, whatever you want to do. It's fatherhood, people. <laughs> it's just, it's motherhood, it's fatherhood, it's bringing up your family. But we've got to learn temperance. We've got to learn self-control. And sometimes we need to have people in our lives that can check us, accountability. It's just like we come to church to, be, to praise the Lord, to worship the Lord, and we come to church to be fed from the Word. We come to church to be held accountable. And maybe you need to just say, hey, wife, hey, husband, help me do this. Help, help each other be accountable when we, when we go off the rails a little bit, because it's going to happen, right? So anyway, 
I told you I'd tell you a little story real quickly and end this thing. This book I referred to about a year ago. It's by a, a guy named Ken Sandy, who used to be a powerful attorney in the world. In 1982, he established Peacemaker Ministries, which now is responsible for, you know, bringing back peace to businesses, families, marriages, uh, children, and their and their uh, parents, and you know, obviously within the church where there's uh, lots of issues. But this guy um, had this happen to him. And remember, we went back to. Uh, I think it was in Deuteronomy, in uh, chapter 6, where we said, um, we were reading about our earthly fathers, or actually in Hebrews, where our earthly fathers would chastise us, Hebrews chapter 12, because they had a personal reason, all right? They needed something from your children. So this is the story. Um, and so, I'm going to read this for you. All I wanted was a little peace and quiet when I came home from a long day at the office, but I wasn't getting it. My children, Megan and Jeff, had been trying to control each other all week, and their constant friction had exhausted their mother's patience. Can you imagine that? See if you can identify with this. Instead of resolving their quarrels with her usual calm, Corlette found herself resorting to sharp words of, Just wait till your father gets home. Ever yet do that, right? So, to shorten this up, basically, it never happened. He comes home, here's what he says, I found nothing but sullen faces, irritable voices, and the general sense that I'd walked into a war zone. Got any of that going on in our households, right? By Sunday morning, it was still going on. Corlett had gone to church early to meet with some women, and I followed 30 minutes later uh, with the kids. I've done this before. As we approached the car, a new contest began. It's my turn to sit in the front seat. No, you got to yesterday. Well, you shouldn't sit there anyway. They're so small, the airbag will probably kill you. <laughs> right? I don't care. I'm sitting in the back seat. Anybody heard that? Then a new voice came into the conversation, or the exchange. This is me. Be quiet! I shouted. Then pointed each child in turn. I said, you get in the back seat right now. And you get in the front seat. I don't want to hear another voice out of either of you. Right? Slam the door. Off to church we go. Amen. We're all happy. <laughs> sound, sound like a husband and wife thing going on, only on a different level, right? How are you today? Oh, I'm good. good. Yeah, right. <laughs> so anyway, here's a, here's, I've done this on the way to school. Climbed in the car, I was take off to vent the anger that had been building up all week. I even adjusted the rear view mirror so I, they could see me glaring at them, right? <laughs> then I'd turn it to the other one. Look, look at my face. I'm mad, right? <laughs> It's funny, but it happens, and you're not, it's not funny when it's going on, though, right? <laughs> anyway, I was going to make, I told them that they had gotten me to the point where they had behaved so badly, now I'm going to make things really miserable for them. What a promise, right? I can do this. <laughs> but when I finally paused to take a break, Jeffrey saw his opening. I love how kids can flip it. Check, check this out. Dad, he said meekly. Do you think maybe you should pray to Jesus and ask him if it's rightful anger? <laughs> and I'm like, I actually had tears when I read it because I, it was like me. I'm like, oh, yeah, out of the mouth of babes, right, <laughs> comes the truth. And the truth is we all go through that. But we have to remember we are human, and we can ask God to direct us and forgive us for that outburst and ask our children, like I said earlier, to do the same and forgive us and continue to build a better relationship and a better way to be fathers, if you will, to be, as the song said, to be good, good fathers that God approves of. So that's my, that's my spiel for today. Uh, thank you for listening. If you're not saved and you don't know your Heavenly Father, then of course this means nothing to you because you've probably not read anything in the book of Proverbs. But I encourage you today as we close, after we're done, come up for prayer for any other need. And if you certainly need salvation out on YouTube, call the church number on the screen. You can always call my number or text me. I'm going out of town with our family today on an overnighter for Father's Day. Uh, so I won't be here in the sanctuary tomorrow morning to check the machine, but call nevertheless to that number. And we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Or you can always call my cell phone or text me at 574-250-7774. I'll give it to you again in a minute. And uh, leave, a, leave a text message or whatever, and I will attempt to call you back as soon as possible. Even though it's Father's Day, I'll do that. Again, the number is 574-250-7774. We want you to get saved. We want you to learn a new way. 
and the godly way to be parents, to be good fathers. It's not a condemnation thing. It's just an encouragement. It can be done. And God is happy when we, when we do things as we read in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy that is right and not do the things that are wrong. And that applies to the disciplining of our children. So stand with me, if you will, and we'll dismiss early. Um, again, if you have any needs, we'll be up here for prayer uh, at the conclusion of this service. Um, I want to close with the benediction out of uh, the next to the last book in the Bible. I love this. Um, next week, Pastor Todd returns with chapter 15 in 1 Corinthians. I mean, it, there is so much stuff in there, literally, because it's like 50, what, eight or nine verses long. Uh, I highly doubt he's going to read 59 verses or whatever the number is. <laughs> he's shaking his head, no way. Uh, but I know he's going to find something that God has directed him to share with us that will be beneficial for all of us. So next week, chapter 15 of 1 Corinthians, please read it. Read anything else. Read the book of Proverbs. Please do it. And uh, you'll be blessed. So thank you again for your attention. Let's pray, and we'll be dismissed. Father, thank you for your word. Help us to be good, good fathers like you are to us. Help us to read your word and to pay heed and to apply it to our lives because we know this is your will for all of us, fathers and mothers, Lord. Help us to bless our children with kindness and compassion and the correction and discipline that you outline in your word that we read today with all diligence. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. For we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. You're dismissed.